Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we are going to check out RescueZilla, which claims to be a Swiss army knife of recovery tools. They've recently released version 2.0 and I was really excited to check it out, especially because they claim that RescueZilla is a drop-in replacement for CloneZilla. And if you didn't already know, CloneZilla has been my imaging solution for taking backup images of hard drives for as long as I can remember. So I wanted to check out RescueZilla and see how it compares to CloneZilla. Now, cloning hard drives and taking images of hard drives isn't all that RescueZilla allows you to do. It's a bootable Linux ISO that you can use to boot into a laptop, a desktop, or a server that isn't working properly and diagnose the problem, attempt file recovery, things like that. But the focus of today's video is going to be the backup and restore feature that is able to take a full image of your hard drive and also it allows you to restore that image as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are at the main menu of RescueZilla where it says welcome and it gives us the option to backup or restore our computer. Now the laptop that I'm running this on is a ThinkPad X1 Extreme and I had to actually lower the resolution down to 1080p because the fonts were practically unreadable. Now I hope that's something that the developers fix in a future version because literally the fonts were so small I couldn't read anything without suffering some kind of eye strain. But after I lowered the resolution down to 1080p, I'm able to read everything just fine. And I guess you can argue that this is a rescue utility, so I suppose the DPI size doesn't really matter all that much. So anyway, what I will do is go ahead and click on the backup button. Now on the list right here, I have two hard drives. The first one is the actual flash drive that I've booted from, so I won't select that. The second hard drive here on the list is the Samsung SSD that is inside my laptop. And I've selected that, so I will click Next. And then here you could basically choose which partitions you would like to make a part of the backup image. And by default, it has selected each of them, so I will leave that. So here on this screen, we could choose the destination for the backup image. And by default, it's actually looking for a device connected directly to the computer. I don't have anything connected directly to the computer other than the flash drive that I've booted from. But if you want to save your backup image to an external hard drive, you could plug it in and then select it here. Now, in my case, I want to actually save my backup image to a network share. So I'll select this option right here. Now here it's automatically selected SMB slash CIFS, basically Samba. And that's actually the only option on the list. Now, I would have wanted to see an option for NFS because that's a popular option. It's not on the list, so I have to assume that's not supported at this time. It doesn't really matter to me because I have Samba set up anyway, so I'll just go ahead and use that. But just keep in mind that if you want to save a backup over the network, you will need to have a Samba share already set up. So anyway, at this first prompt right here, we will need to type the path to the server and the share. So what I will do is just type a couple of slashes, and then the host name for my storage server, and then another slash, and then the name of the share. In my case, I just called it images. And that should be all I need to do here. Now, if this is a password protected share, I'll need to add the username and password here. And if you are using a Windows domain, you can enter that here. I don't have one, so I can't test that. This particular share is accessible only on my local network and it's wide open, so I don't need to authenticate. So I will click Next. Now what it's doing right now is showing me some of the images that I have in this share already because the share that I've chosen is the one that I've actually been using for this very purpose. I have a CloneZilla share that is called images and it has some CloneZilla images in there currently, which is what these are. But what this is allowing me to do is choose a subfolder if there is one and I don't have any subfolders here. I'll just go ahead and save it right where I am. So I'll click next and then it allows me to create a name for the image. So I will change the name to include the name of the actual laptop. 
This laptop in particular has a 4K screen, so I've been using it to record 4K footage for the channel. So I just call it my studio PC, which is its only use case, basically. I'll click Next. And it's giving us a confirmation screen. It's telling us what it wants to back up, what the source hard drive is, and then also where the target will be. So if all of that looks good, we can go ahead and continue, and I will. So as you can see here, it's saving the image to the network share. And it's going to take a bit of time because, you know, I decided to connect via Wi-Fi, and that may not have been a great decision on my part because, as I'm sure you're aware, Wi-Fi is much slower than Ethernet. And to make matters worse, I actually throttle my Wi-Fi on my local network here to basically prevent any user of Wi-Fi from using up all of my bandwidth. So it's not the fault of RescueZilla that this is going to take a while. It's solely my fault, but that's fine. I will just let this continue and I will be right back. All right, so as you see, the process is successful, or so it says. It's telling me that the backup image has been saved successfully and then it gives me a successful confirmation for each of the partitions that were on my hard drive. And it's telling me how many minutes it actually took for this process to complete. Again, I decided to use Wi-Fi, so if I had connected an Ethernet adapter, it would have been much faster. So now we're back at the main menu, and let's just say, for example, that I wanted to restore the hard drive on this computer. Maybe the hard drive failed, or I want to go back to a known good configuration, and maybe I've gone ahead and booted into RescueZilla again. Let's take a look at the restore process as well. So I'll click on the restore button right here. And now it's asking me where the source drive is. And again, if I wanted to use an external hard drive, I can connect that here and then use that to restore the backup. But since I saved the backup image on my network share, I will need to choose the option here for shared over a network and then enter the same details here like I did last time. And in my case, again, that's all I should need to fill in because this is a wide open Samba share. And as you can see here, we have a list of the backup images that I have in that folder. And we can see the image that I saved in the previous step right here. So what I'm going to do is select that and then I'll click Next. And now it wants me to choose the destination drive. So I will overwrite the main hard drive of the computer. And what's cool here is that I can actually choose individual partitions to restore. Now I want to restore the entire disk, so I'll leave all four of those partitions selected. But it's pretty cool that if you have a specific partition that you want to restore, you can definitely do that. And then of course it's going to give me a summary. It's going to tell me what all it wants to do. And if everything here looks like it should, then I can go ahead and continue by clicking Next. And it's going to give me a warning that the hard drive on this computer will be completely wiped out and replaced with the contents of the backup image, which is exactly what I want to do. So I'll click yes. And now the process has started and it's going to go ahead and restore my backup image. So what I will do is let this finish and then I will be right back. So as you see here, the process is complete and it gives us a successful confirmation for each of the partitions on the hard drive. So we should be good to go. Now overall, I think the process of backing up and restoring an image using RescueZilla is very easy and straightforward. And this might even be my preferred solution, but we'll see. But so far, so good. Now, I feel like I need to spend a little bit more time with RescueZilla to really appreciate all that it has to offer. But I was very impressed by its ability to take a full backup image of my hard drive and then allow me to restore it as well. And I also like the fact that the image format that it uses is 100% compatible with CloneZilla, which means that with RescueZilla, I can use any of the CloneZilla images that I already have on my file share. 
Now I had some minor issues such as the font size being nearly unreadable because it was very small on the high DPI display of this machine, but that was easily rectified by just changing the resolution to 1080p because, you know, let's face it, we're not going to use RescueZilla to watch 4K videos or anything like that. So it works well enough for me. And I also like the fact that we can use Wi-Fi and CloneZilla is great, I love it, but the default CloneZilla image, you know, it doesn't really make the process of connecting to Wi-Fi easy and RescueZilla does. And you could argue that you probably shouldn't be using Wi-Fi for taking a backup of your hard drive and restoring it because it's going to be slower. But if that's all you have, it's good to have that ability in RescueZilla. I think that's really awesome. So I'm going to keep using it and I may make other videos about RescueZilla in the future. But for now, I've really enjoyed my time with it and I highly recommend that you check it out. Thanks for watching.